Welcome back to the Rad and Dad channel, or welcome if you are new. Congratulations, you've stumbled upon possibly the best YouTube channel in the history of the world. Today we're talking about something that I love, and that's a nice BBK. Alright, so for those of you who don't know what BBK stands for, Big Bore Kit. Uh, kit is spelled with a K and not a C. So, um, I went with DHM, it's an all-inclusive, uh, it comes with a gasket I need, a new injector, which is an OEM Honda, but it is a different injector than comes stock on the Grom. Um, it obviously comes with the bore and a new piston. It's a 186 bored out kit. Um, the nice thing about the DHM kit as well, um, the piston already comes with the rings correctly installed and gapped and everything. Uh, and then it also comes with a cam if you need it. Uh, you can select yes or no. I don't have a cam yet, so I did select a cam that they paired with it. And then you can either send your uh, ECU into them for a tune or you can get a new one or nothing. Um, I just chose, because it was only a difference of a few bucks, I just chose to get a whole new ECU already flashed with like a base map for this kit. That means I can save my stock one and either sell it or use it down the line. And also this is a tunable ECU as well. So I can put a uh, you know power commander and have it sent to a, uh, well, drive it, ride it to a dyno jet and have somebody further tune it as well. But this is just kind of a base that you would definitely need. You can't run the stock ECU on a 186 kit. So a couple things I already did to the bike before you'll start seeing the footage. I took off the uh, fairings on both sides. I took off of the air box. Uh, let me see, I took off the exhaust. Um, and just some maybe some small clip and uh, you know clip in wires for sensors and stuff like that um, just some small stuff like that but other than that you'll see me uh, completely tear everything down and then put this sucker in oh and it came with a uh, oil cooler as well so let's go ahead and see I obviously already opened it it's been sitting in my garage for a long time and I hate not opening boxes that is the little ECU by the way this is my stock uh, cylinder from the Grom. It's already off, but I did that film. You'll see it. Don't worry. You'll see me take it off. Um, banjo bolts, it appears. Injector. Here is the actual cylinder. I believe the pistons. Yep, cylinder and piston. And it's a different color, so when you're riding down the road, everybody will know. Well, anybody that knows anything about stock Groms will be like, oh, that's not a stock Grom. Uh, here is the cam. It's a TB. Uh, parts cam, a gasket, the actual you know radiator, hoses, and the bracket for the radiator. And that is all she wrote. All right, so let's go ahead, unbox the things we'll need first. We'll definitely need this cam. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know they were gonna uh, supply the bearings. Um, but cam, not that you can tell anything by looking at it in the camera, but there she is. We'll need the injector. See, says Honda. I wonder if it says what it's from. Nope, it doesn't. And then the other thing we'll need, well, the gasket, but I'm not gonna take that out until we're ready to use it. And obviously, oh, the cylinder. Sleeve, let's get this out. And you might be asking yourself, you know, Chris, you bought a Grom. You knew it was a small bike. You already have a Harley. Why spend the money and the time doing a big bore kit? Uh, well, there's a couple reasons somebody might want to do a big bore kit. One, um, if you're a man. Two, if uh, you're not a little baby. And then three, if you're not a little girl. I'm just kidding. There's a there's a one. It's super cheap. It's stupid cheap. Like for this whole kit, and granted, this is not everything you should technically have. You know, there's some other stuff. Uh, you know, some valve parts and stuff that upgraded as well for people that are going to be really hard on it. And that stuff I'll do down the line. But even those parts are like 10, 20, you know, 30 bucks depending on what you're doing. This whole kit was around the price of some air cleaners just for a 
Harley. So super cheap. Um, this is gonna allow, hopefully it's going to allow uh, a lot more torque, which won't make me want to change the stock gearing on the Grom. So I can keep some top speed. If anything, I'm hoping to maybe change my gearing up a little bit and gain a little bit of top speed um, because the loss of you know felt torque from the gearing should hopefully balance out, if not still be more prevalent with this kit. So I might be able to gain some top speed um, while still gaining uh, torque with changing the gearing. Um, if not, I should at least gain, you know, there's a couple people say that they are using these kits, um, maybe not necessarily this one, but a big bore, big bore kit staying with the two valve, uh, with the two valve valve head from the stock Honda and still reaching mid to high 70s, if not low 80s. Um, so that would be great. Uh, what I could do down the line also is either get uh, some work done to my two valve head or upgrade to a four valve head, all of which is not gonna be as in depth as this, but still somewhat in depth. So anyway, um, here we go. I thought it'd be kind of cool to compare sizes of these puppies. I don't know if it'll, let me see if I can see it first. Cause if I can't see it, you're all definitely never gonna see it. You can kind of see it. Let me try to get it so it's, I have an idea here. Maybe let's, uh, maybe if I put it like that and I put this one under it, you can see maybe how much bigger. It's decent size. I mean, keep in mind you're going from like a 150 to a 186. It's not like you're going from like a, a 50 to a 300, you know, but uh, should make quite a bit of a difference. So. I'm gonna get this prepped with some of the parts from this, get the injector installed. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put this uh, sleeve, the actual bore and the piston on the bike first, and then we're gonna put the cam on, um, switch that out, and then we'll have to adjust the valve uh, clearances. Offhand, I don't remember what they are, but uh, when I do it, obviously I'll tell you guys. So let's head on back over to the bike and I'll show you guys uh, what I did to install this puppy. All right, so the first step before anything would be to drain the oil, obviously, uh, and then loosen, you don't have to remove it all the way, but loosen the cam chain tensioner, which is next to the oil drain plug. Right now I am undoing the inspection covers. Basically the top one on the left is where you'll see a marking and the middle one is where you can actually turn the motor over. Then I'm going to loosen and take off the uh, cam cover. The cam chain and gear has a marking on it as well as that little inspection hole. Uh, the hole you're going to see a little T when you reach top dead center and then the gear uh, with the chain you're going to see it match up with the little arrow in the front and I included some pictures for that as well. Once you are sure that you've reached top dead center, unscrew the bolt that holds the gear on for the cam chain. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you remember where that marking was, where the gear fell on it, because otherwise it's gonna be a pain to try to reach top dead center again uh, and make sure everything is aligned uh, when you put everything back together. So what I did was use a little uh, Sharpie marked where it was, and then as soon as I took it off because I knew the Sharpie would not stay, I used a zip tie for the exact spot that I wanted, and then later on you'll see when I put the gear back on, I wind up zip tying the gear to the chain uh, once it's on a little bit, uh, and that makes everything way easier as well. Now I'm releasing the actual, there's like a little uh, spool that guides the cam uh, make sure that it stays and doesn't get caught up. So release that bolt. Um, you'll be able to get to it later unless you have some real, real skinny angle pliers, but I just waited. Uh, now basically just releasing all the bolts that hold the head and the piston and the cylinder together. Um, pretty easy. So just release all those and then everything will come off.
to make sure after you remove everything that you remove and scrape off whatever is left of your gasket. There's a metal gasket between the valve head uh, and the piston cylinder, uh, and then there's an actual typical felt, uh, like foamy gasket um, between the uh, bottom end and then the piston cylinder. Uh, so I had to scrape that off, and then I put a towel in there right in the hole just to make sure that uh, nothing, no debris or anything got in the engine because then we'd have a whole nother issue. Uh, and then now we're up to taking off the actual piston. Um, the piston comes on the bike with like two little tabs. Uh, you basically just have to jiggle them out and then there's a little sleeve on the inside that comes out. <music> Like I said in the beginning, DHM already pre-gaps their piston, so I just left it in there just to make things easier and not have to wedge everything in there. So I left it just uh, the end of it sticking out, and then I'm gonna install it with the supplied clips that DHM includes with the stock sleeve. Don't do like I do, and make sure at this point that you put your gasket on because I had to redo everything I just did after realizing I never put the gasket on. So same steps, just make sure you put the gasket on beforehand. Make sure everything was coated with oil since it was bone dry and it's going to be the first you know the maiden voyage of it so just make sure everything is drenched in oil interior wise now i put the actual spool that guides the cam chain in there installed that Before you put the valve head on, make sure that you actually put that metal gasket that DHM supplies as well, or you know, you buy another one, or if you really want to reuse it, um, just make sure that that goes on before you put everything in there.
before we put the new cam in, we're going to need to remove the valve inspection covers and remove the valves themselves. So we'll remove this little catch that keeps them there, and then we're going to remove the pins that they uh, pivot on, and then the actual valves themselves, and that'll make it nice and easy for us to put the new cam in. Once those are removed, cam should slide right out. Make sure the new cam has plenty of oil or assembly lube on it. It should pretty much slide right in. Maybe a little bit tighter tolerances because it's brand new, but other than that, it should be pretty simple. You shouldn't have to really force anything. Then we're going to put the valves all back together, we're going to get the cam chain back on, and then we're going to adjust the valves. Here you see, even with the zip tie, it was kind of a pain in the butt to get it at the correct spot, but the zip tie definitely helped not having to look at, uh, you know, Sharpie that was rubbed off from oil or anything like that. Once I got it pretty close, I took a zip tie to the top to bolt that, you know, mold the chain and the gear together, and then I took the old zip tie off and then put it back on the cam. Uh, there's a little mark in the cam where the actual gear fits into. Pretty self-explanatory, it's the only way it can go in, um, and then just tighten it down.
and then make sure that you tighten your cam chain tensioner back after this. All right, now it's time for valve adjustment. So you're gonna have to loosen. Uh, we'll say that they do make a special tool for this, but me being cheap, I don't have it, so I had to make do with what I have. You can very easily do it without the tool, but I'm sure the tool makes it better. Um, you do need some feeler gauges. I don't remember offhand what I did. Uh, I should have, truthfully, I should have looked it up, um, but I'll probably just write in the description if you're really curious, but you're gonna have to adjust the valves to whatever your cam manufacturer recommends that you adjust them to, uh, and then, go ahead and cover the valves back up with the valve covers. All right, now part of the DHM kit is that oil cooler, the radiator that it comes with, and that actually mounts to the bottom valve cover. So unscrew everything you just did pretty much and put that on there. Um, the kit is pretty self-explanatory as far as what goes where for it. Um, you have two bolts, two banjo bolts that go onto the left side of the motor. You can see in this frame on the left of the motor where the two holes that are threaded for those screws are. But once you get this radiator put on where you would like it and you thread the actual tubes through where you want them and screw everything down, you can start on assembling the rest of the bike. Go ahead and reinstall your throttle body. Once the throttle body is reinstalled, we're gonna have to change the injector out. Pretty self-explanatory, just unscrews from the throttle body, and then it's just a friction fit to where the actual assembly is. And then there's that electrical wire harness that clips onto it. Take the old one off, put the new one that DHM supplies in, which like I said, is an OEM Honda one to obviously a different bike. Put the electrical fitting back on there, friction fit it back to the assembly and then screw it back into the throttle body. Second to last step, we're gonna put the whole air box back on or whatever air cleaner, air filter device you have on your ground, put that back on the throttle body now, make sure everything is all assembled with that. 
And then the final step is going to be to switch out the ECU uh, and then obviously put your exhaust back on or whatever you have that's going to be slightly different per bike. Like I said in the beginning, the kit that I got from DHM, you have the option of flashing your ECU, sending it in, and sending and them sending it back reflashed, or getting a whole new ECU with the flash on it directly, directly from DHM. I just went with a new one, so in this we're going to be taking the old one off, which is very simple. Um, just that it is a little tight in there, so we need a little help from a flathead friend. But take the old one off, put the rubber piece on the new one, and then snap the new one back in put it back on the little placeholder that there is on the frame there, and then we're gonna see if she starts. All right, this is legitimate, the first startup. I don't even know if it actually starts. It turns on, that's a good sign. All right, here goes. All right, so the installation is all done. As you can see, I'm wearing different clothes. This is like a month after I did it. I had a period of time where I just filmed a bunch of stuff kind of back to back and had to edit and whatever. You guys don't need to know my whole life story. Point is, it's done. I've had about 100 to 200 miles on it, somewhere around there. I can't really remember because I reset it twice because uh, of different stuff I did. But anyway, definitely over 100, somewhere around, maybe let's just call it 150 <laughs> miles. Um, but on the big bore kit had about 150 so i have a little bit of experience with it enough to tell you that i think it was definitely worth the money completely changes the characteristics of the grom completely changes the sound um, and i can't tell you if that's more of the cam or the big bore kit as far as like performance wise um, you know which one is better off I got both of them obviously in the kit. So the big bore kit i think is cool it adds a cool custom look to it it was pretty easy to do um, really not anything too difficult about this install at all um, as you could probably tell from my shirt it is christmas time it's actually christmas morning when i'm filming this uh, everybody is still asleep i woke up a little early to finish this that way i can get it out for you on saturday the rest of the video has been sitting in the queue uh, pretty much completely edited so now it's time for me to just film this outro real quick um, but yeah Definitely good. I obviously will post the links to this and the DHM website um, in the description of this video, like I always do, as well as my merchandise, which if you've never seen it, check it out. I have two different collections on there, the classic Ryan Dad logo and then the new school uh, Ryan Dad, which should be at the bottom left if you're looking at the screen, which should be this way. Um, it's the little watermark that I put on most of my recent videos. But anyway, I thank you guys for watching both new and old uh, subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a Christmas present of a subscription. Uh, turn on your post notifications because you'll never miss a video if you turn them on. Please watch one of the two videos. Let's make them up here. Uh, one of these two videos on the screen. I really would appreciate that. Make sure you click the like button on this video. And until the next time, guys, ride safe. Have fun. Dad out. <laughs>